Okay, let us start. You know, we are teaching you the subject of strength of material. Generally, as per our convention of this college, a particular subject is taught by a particular teacher only, not by a multiple teacher. But here, we have made limited time. We are, you have uh, admitted late, late and uh, you are supposed to finish it, your work quickly of your syllabus of the third semester. So we are sharing the class loads among ourselves and we are giving you more number of classes. This subject strength of material will partly taught by Professor Prabhash, Prabhash Banerjee, Dr. Prabhash Banerjee, and partly taught by me. I, am, I will give, give you certain chapters, modules, and Professor Banerjee will teach you certain other modules, but not the same. I, am, I will give you the idea about the moment of inertia, which is one of your modules, but at the latter part of your syllabus, but more or less, I'm starting it at the beginning because there is a problem in teaching separately is that the knowledge of certain chapters is required to understand the knowledge of the subsequent chapter. But this chapters, I'm, I will try my best to teach you without uh, going through the details of the uh, simple stress and strain, compound stress and strain, bending, etc. Uh, these questions are required to understand understood those two chapters which are which will be being which will uh, be uh, which is being taught by dr chatterjee dr Banerjee. <clears throat> now let us start the moment of inertia first time let us understand what you mean by this term moment of inertia Now, by definition, moment of force, this is the moment of force. So what is can be a moment of a force? What is force exactly? Which is a particular value of load or work or job or pressure, which is supposed to be applied with the certain at in a line of a line of a, according to a line of action and in a certain distance according to a, to a certain direction. <coughs> so the moment of the force is the turning effect produced by a force on a body by which it acts. Means if we want to turn or rotate a body, we'll apply a couple or a moment, say moment, moment, couple torque, turning effect, effect on a body. So if we apply, if we want to rotate or move in a rotating, rotating direction, we'll apply a slot or a force or a turning force, turning effect of a body. This turning effect is produced by a force on a body on which it acts. Now, this turning effect is mathematically equal to the product of the force and the perpendicular direction in between the line of action of the force and the point about which the moment is applied. So you know very well what is moment. So this is a moment. This is a point here. A force is applied here at a distance, certain distance, known distance from A, from this point. Then the torque applied over this point 
or the moment applied over this point is the force F multiplied by the vertical distance of the point. If we draw a vertical from the point to the line of action of the force, this particle distance from here to here, the force multiplied by the particle distance is defined as mathematically equal to the torque or <clears throat> mathematically equal to torque or turning effect or moment, whatever it will be the name. This is the definition of it. Uh, but this moment by definition is defined as first moment of inertia, first moment of the force. Just a second. This is defined as first moment of the force or this moment is if we again multiply this moment by the particular distance x between the point and the line of action of the force say p into x into x that is p x square then this quantity is defined as the second moment moment of the moment of the force or second moment of the force or in short moment of inertia so this is a mathematical term moment of inertia which is being used in lot of different applications. That's why it is important to know and important to understand. And But it doesn't exist in the art. It is nothing but a mathematical sign, mathematical term, mathematical terminology, which is very much useful to understand certain physical phenomena in strength of material as well as design side. So again, I'm telling you, the moment of inertia, second moment of the force, or uh, second moment of the earth, or moment of moment of moment of the force is the force multiplied by first of all the initial distance from the force or the line of action of the force and to the vertical distance of the point. Again, it is multiplied by the same distance of the of the point, the same vertical distance of the point from the moment of the force. So that's F is equal to this is equal to F S square, or here it is written as F X square. This is the second moment of force or is simply the moment of inertia or second moment of force or moment or moment of the force or simply moment of inertia different as you know it as mr this is moment of inertia just a second <clears throat> Sometimes, here, what you see, sometimes what we find, instead of the force, instead of force, area or mass of a body or figure is taken into consideration. So far, we have talked about the force and its square of this distance from a certain point is equal to the moment of the inertia. But instead of force, we can say, consider area, a certain area or certain mass of the force is taken into we can take into consideration. Then second moment or moment is defined as a second moment of area or second moment of mass or but all of these second moments are broadly defined as moment of inertia. So what is second moment? Second moment of moment or distance multiplied by the distance of a force, area, mass. These are all equal to defined as moment of inertia. <clears throat> so moment of inertia co covers the second moment of, of area, of mass, or force. All three can be used as moment of inertia, as it, it can be brought under the terms of moment of inertia as far as by line of consideration. Now, what is the moment of inertia of a plane area? This is the moment of inertia of a plane area. Now, consider a plane area whose moment of inertia is required to be find out. Sp split up the whole area into a number of small elements. Say area is divided into small areas like or different small areas like A1, A2, A3, area of the small elements. And R1, R2, R3 as defined as the corresponding distance of the moment elements of the line about which the moment of inertia is required to be find out. 
So the moment inertia of the area will be I A into R1 square, A2 in, A1 into R1 square, A2 into R2 square, A3 into R3 square plus dot 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 or sigma A R square. So there's another mathematical terms comes into action here. Say so certain area A. Whatever may be the physical its value, whatever may be the shape, say considering only area. We divide it into A1, A2, A3, A3, etc., etc., etc. And all these individual areas at a certain distance from our point of consideration, from, from which our moment of inertia is supposed to be calculated. This distance from this point of individual area is say R1, R2, R3. So moment of inertia of this area divided by Moment of inertia of this area, divide, area divided by a number of infinitesimal or area small areas whose distance is also known to us will be given by the summation of all the area multiplied by the square of the distance, constant distance, and it can be written as sigma or a r square. This is moment of inertia is sigma a r square. So its formula you can use to calculate a, the moment of inertia of a certain certain known objects which we are which may be required to find out the to know the bending stresses of different beams. Now <clears throat> what will be the unit of moment of inertia? This is important to know at this type of point. As a matter of fact, the unit of moment of inertia As a matter of fact, unit of the moment of inertia of a plane area depends on the unit of the area and its length. So, moment unit will be like this: moment of inertia of depends on the area, area of a plane area depends on the unit of the area and its length and its length, distance. For example, see area is in meter square. The length is also in meter. The moment of the area will be meter to the power four. The area is meter square meter and length we have to length or distance from a certain against a certain point or certain axis is known that's also given in meter and we know that moment of inertia is the square of the distance so the area should be meter meter square and square of the distance will also be meter square so when the area will be given in meter to the power four if the area is given in millimeter square and length distance or length also in millimeter then the moment of the area is distance applied expressed in the area to the power 4. If given in foot, it will be foot to the power 4. If given in inch, it is inch to the power 4 like this. <clears throat> the moment of the area now, the method of methods of moment of area. The moment of the area is now find out by any of the following methods. Method of calculating that of Calculating the moment of area. <clears throat> now, the moment of the area is now formed by the moment of the area is now formed found by any of the following methods, by Routh's rate and by integration process. So Routh rate, method of Routh's rule. Now, the method of Routh says, method of Routh's rule or method of Mr. Routh says, if a body is geometrical, symmetrical about three perpendicular axis or X axis, Y axis, Z axis, then the moment of inertia about any one of the axis passing through the CG is given by I, A or M into S divided by three. I is equal to A or M into S divided by four. <clears throat> so initially it was for a square or rectangular area, where A is the cross-sectional area, or by or M can be mass and S is the distance divided by three. Or 
i is equal to h into h divided by 3, where what is the, uh, a into m by s by 4, this is a circular or uh, elliptical laminar. And a into s, a into m into s divided by 5, or a spherical body. So these are the four rules invented by the Mr. Rao. Mr. Root, not Rao exactly, so Mr. Root. Then I A into S or I M into S divided by S. Or A into S or M into S. For in case of square or rectangular lamina, this is equal to three. For circular elliptical lamina, this becomes not circular or elliptical lamina, this becomes four. And for spherical body, this becomes five. But what is A, what is M, and what is S? Here A is given by the area of the plane area. Area of the plane area. First of all, what is the area? Over which moment of inertia you want to calculate? Or M, what is the mass of the body? Whose moment of inertia you want to say? Either we have to calculate the mass or you have to calculate the area. Both of them, all these things are included by moment of inertia. Uh, area or mass. Either area or mass. And this multiplied by S, where S is the sum of the square of the two squares of two semi-axis other than the axis about which the moment of inertia is required to be find out. So, sum of squares from the different squares of the distance of the two semi-axis, which means if we have three rectangular perpendicular axis and we want to find out the moment of inertia about axis say x. So, A will be the distance of the square of this uh, particular body or particular area from y axis and as well as z axis. Hmm. So, Distance is A will be square of the distance from y axis or z axis. If we want to know the moment of inertia about a but about say x axis. So area we are supposed to know or mass we are supposed to know, and you have to multiply, you have to know and multiply the distance of the y or z axis. Or if we want to know the moment of inertia of y axis, we have to know, we have to use the distance from x and z axis. Similarly, if we want to know the moment of inertia about z axis, it will be, you have to get multiplied the square of the distance from y to y and as well as x axis. So this is totally a formula created by Mr. Rao for calculating the moment of inertia. And he invented or proposed that all this area, this multiplication area multiplied by the square of the distance should be divided by three to get square and rectangular inertia area divided by four to get the circular and elliptical lamina and divided by five if we want to get this moment of inertia of a spherical body. Next, the moment of inertia by integration. <clears throat> Just a second. Now, <clears throat> moment of inertia by Mr. Rao, as well as we have to know the moment of inertia, perturbation of moment of inertia by uh, integration method. The amount of inertia, the moment of inertia of an area by the integration method is generally, uh, integration method is under consideration of a particular figure. Whose mass, whose moment of inertia is required to be find out about x x axis and y x axis as shown in the figure. What is the meaning of this word? So we have to find out the moment of inertia by integration method. 
So we have to first, we have to calculate the constitution of this area or the plane figure shown here. We want to find out the moment of inertia of this area. And we have to find out it, this moment of inertia about yy axis and z uh, xs axis and yy axis as shown in the figure. So let us uh, <coughs> divide the whole area into a number of strips. Say, DA, X, distance of the central gravity of the strip, X is the area of the strip, and X is the distance of the set CG, center of gravity of the strip from, from X axis. Y, distance of the center of gravity of the strip about Y axis, along, along Y axis. So say this is the full area, which we are under consideration, out of which we are considering an elemental strip out of it, whose area is equal to TA. And we are find this is the CG of that particular area, of that particular area TA. We want to find out the distance of this CG from Y axis means distance from here to here. Means that is given as the X coordinate of CG. And we have to find out the distance of this point about X axis. We have to know the Y coordinates of CG. So, first of all, we know x and y coordinate or distance of CG from x axis and y axis. Now, the moment of area of the strip along y axis will be <coughs> dA into x square. As a, dA is the area of the elemental area, area of this elemental strip, and x is the distance of uh, y axis of the strip. So, the moment of inertia about the y axis is about the y-axis is TA into X square. And that of the and moment of inertia of the whole axis area about the y-axis will be integrating the area I, Y, Y, sigma TA into X square. And similarly, moment of inertia <coughs> about X-axis is the I, X, Y, and sigma TA into Y square. This method, actually, this is I, X, X. This is sigma di into y square. This method will be used for finding out the moment of inertia of the section. Actually, we want to know, we are using, first you have to know the area, then you have to know the CG, and you have to know the distance by an x-axis, and we have to multiply the area multiplied by the distance, and we have to add them together to get the total moment of inertia of the area. Now, let us finally find out the moment of inertia of a rectangular section. Consider a rectangular section A, B, C, D. Say here, A, B, C, D. Do the rectangular section of side, say, D. That is the height or the longer, longer side and B or width or shorter side. The B is the width of the section and D is the depth of the section. Let us consider strip PQ. This is given here. Let us consider strip PQ of thickness dy parallel to xx axis at a distance y from it as shown in the figure. So this distance is, this is the xx axis, this is the yi axis. The distance of PQ from xx axis is equal to the y <coughs> as given in the figure. The, the moment of the area of the strip about the x-axis will be area multiplied by y square, p into dy, p is the width, and dy is the thickness. So uh, the area of this area of this elemental strip is p into dy multiplied by y square or p y square into dy. Now the moment of inertia whole section may be find out. Moment of inertia of the whole section can be found out by integrating above equation for the whole length of the lamin. That is from d by 2 to plus d by 2. So we have to calculate the moment of inertia from half of the distance of a step, that is d by 2 to plus d by 2 to minus d by 2. As we are going through, as we know that x axis is proposed to divide this area by the distance d by 2 here and by the distance d by 2 here. So 
we have to do uh, this is the plus d by 2 this is the minus d by 2 and you have to integrate the area and integrate the area from this we to from plus 2 minus d by minus d by 2 plus d by 2 so i x x is supposed to be minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 b into y squared into dy b into y squared into dy or b into half minus b, b minus b by 2 to plus d by 2 to y squared y squared to d1. So that becomes after integration will find b multiplied y cube by 3 integrating from minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 or d by 2 whole square by 3 minus minus d by 2 whole square by 3. That is this will be d by uh, 8 this will be d by 8 and this minus will cancel make this minus plus. So, so d by 8 plus divided d by 4 4 multiplied by 3 is 12. So d cube divided by 12 multiplied by b. So the uh, integration, I mean, the moment of inertia of this rectangular section of x x axis is b divided by d by 2 divided by d 12, uh, b d to the power cube divided by 12. And similarly, the moment of inertia i y y about y axis is b d b to the power cube divided by 12. The same way by taking the elementary strip along the x axis, along the y axis, like this. And in this case, the education will be done minus b by 2 to plus b by 2. And same equation can be used in case of y square, but you have to use in case is, is x square multiplied by ty, ta. Now, cube is to be, it is to be noted that cube is to be taken by the side which is at right angle of the line of response, which is at the right angle of the, to the line of responses. This may also be distilled, obtained from Rao's rule as visual, I excess fall into S, where area A is the B into D and sum of the areas about X axis and Y axis is d squared by 2 plus 0 d to the power 4 by 4. That is the sum of the area about y axis and z axis. So x axis a x to s b d into d to the power 4 by 4 divided by 3 or b to the power 4 by 12. So area you have put b into d and s is the <coughs> sum of the square of the distance from y axis and z axis. So 1 is about the sum of the square about y i axis is equal to d by 2 y square, but about z axis, which is also particular to this uh, plane of paper, which we don't have any distance, is going through the CG, so it is equal to 0. So, d to the power 4 by 4, so i x axis b into d to d to the power 4 by 4 into p to d to the power 4 by 12. The moment of a hollow rectangular section. Now, let us go for the moment of inertia of a hollow rectangular section. What is that? A, B, C, and D. E, F, G, and H is the hollow, hollow portion of the rectangular section. So, the B C D is the main section, and E, F, G, H is the Contour section, the inside the in, inside or inside the section of it. Say B, breadth of the outer triangle, rectangle, and depth of the outer rectangle, and small B1 and B1 and D1 is the corresponding radius of the surface <coughs> area, values of the uh, in inside of the inside rectangles, <coughs> inner rectangle. We know that the moment of inertia, if the other angles be ABCD about x axis axis is b to d to the power 12 by 12. We know the moment of inertia of the outer rectangle ABCD is about x x x axis is b to the power 12, b to d to the power 12, e to the power 3 divided by 12. The moment of inertia of the cutout angle EFG, that is. <coughs> That is cut out. 
rectangle EFG. EFG H about XX, XX axis is P1. P1 is P1 bar cube, P1 bar cube. So we know the moment of inertia of the outer area. And at the same time, we know the moment of inertia of this inner area. So about X axis. Thus, the moment of inertia of the hollow rectangular section about X X axis is a I X X moment of inertia of the rectangle A B C D minus moment of inertia of the rectangle E F G H. That is V to the power D to the power Q P L twelve minus V one D one to the power Q twelve by twelve. Similarly, if we go through I Y Y. <coughs> In moment of inertia about the y axis, y y axis, that will be d into p to the power cube, pi by 12, minus d1 p on to the power cube, pi by 12. This is applied only when the CG of the main section as well as that of the cutout section coincide with each other. When both of the CG are same, then only this portion, this type of uh, equation can be usable. Let's go for another theorem. Theorem of perpendicular axis. What this tells us? It states that if Ix and Iyy with the moment of inertia of the section, uh, section, plane section, about two perpendicular axis meeting at the point O, the moment of inertia j, Ijz about the axis Zz perpendicular to the plane and posing, uh, passing through the intersection is given by Ix6 plus Iy. So Ijz is equal to I x is by I I. So what we are imagining here, we have a <coughs> plane section. Then we have a plane section like this. Okay. We have x x axis here and y y axis here, and both are passing through the origin O. We have a, another third, third axis or uh, three-dimensional axis J J, which is also passing through O and perpendicular to the plane of paper. J axis is perpendicular to the plane of paper. The z axis is supposed to be perpendicular to the plane of paper. Now, if we know the <coughs> moment of inertia of this plane of paper about x axis and y axis equal to i x x and i a z, then the moment of inertia about the z axis will be given as a summation of i axis plus which i a y. Next, how will you prove it? Consider a small section, small lamina P of an area DA having coordinates as x and y along x and y and by y two mutually perpendicular area axis on a plane section. Uh, constant small lamina of an area having coordinates as x and y along x and y to mutually perpendicular axis on a plane section. So this is the small lamina from where here. So this is here. This is a small lamina of a small area. Small lamina of an area. It is a D. Its area is equal to D. It has coordinates x and y axis and x and y on two mutually perpendicular axes on a plane section. So this is a plane section. Its coordinates is a very small and its coordinates is given as x and y. And now we consider a plane OJ perpendicular to the x and y. So we consider another plane which is perpendicular to which is OJ, perpendicular axis, perpendicular to the OX and Y, plane on a, say, axis. Be the distance of the lamina, let R be the distance of the lamina for Z axis such that o, 
op is equal to r and <coughs> so that op is equal to r with distance from here to here is given by r from the quantum the figure we see the r square is equal to x square plus y square if it is x this is y then r square will be x square plus y square so the moment of inertia of the lamina p about x axis is i axis 3a into y square and that about y axis is i axis i da into x square so i z z will be given by similar for the similar definition da into r square distance of from y axis so dx will be r square x square da r square plus x square or da into x square but da into y square or which is equal to i y y into i x x <coughs> this is the proof the moment of inertia of the circular section consider circular section a b c d of radius r this is a circular section a a b c and d <coughs> this is of radius r and with center o and x x and y y is the two axes of reference through o so this is x x and this is y y this is given as two axes of reference as shown in the figure o now consider an elemental ring of radius x this is a elemental ring which is given here this is the elemental ring of distance x hmm. the thickness is equal to dx so this is at a distance x from the from the radius it has the radius x and it has thickness dx so the area of this ring will be 2 into pi r into dx moment of the area of the ring about the x axis and the y axis area multiplied by 2 into pi x into dx the moment of area of the ring about x axis and y axis the area into square of the distance so area is given by 2 into pi x dx multiplied by the square of the distance 2 into pi x to the power cube divided by dx and the moment of inertia of the whole section moment of inertia of the whole section about the central axis can be find out by integrating the about section for the whole radius of the circle that is from 0 to r as r is the zero radius of the whole circle we have to integrate this about elemental area <coughs> element elemental moment of inertia for the whole area so we have to integrate it from 0 to r 2 into pi x to the power cube divided by dx Two into pi zero to integration of zero to r x to the power cube by dr dr. That is x z z two into pi x to the power cube by dr and i by y. If we put r is equal to zero, it is two into pi two into r square. Two into pi z to the power four by r is equal to zero to r. Zero to r. So that is pi by two, r to the power four, or pi by thirty-two, d to the power four. Substituting r is equal to d. So i z z is given as two into this is i z z. This is given as you have to integrate it. You have to integrate it x to the power four divided by four. You have to put the value of zero to r, so it becomes pi by thirty-two d to the power four. And if you substitute the value of r is equal to pi by two, and from the theory of perpendicular axis, it is given as i x x plus i y y is i j j. So i x is equal to 